<laughs> that is so much fun. What's better than clear water sight fishing, huh? <laughs> you know? All right. <laughs> Not bad for the first five minutes of showing up to the lake. First five minutes. <laughs> Folks, today we're at Lake Pleasant. And I'll tell you what, we're here during my favorite time of the year. The, sp the spring bed fishing. It's a lot of fun. And uh, when these fish move up and start doing that, it's a lot of fun. It's like hunting. You get to actually for the, you get, you get to really see the fish react to your bait and have a lot of fun with it. We're throwing different baits today. I'd like to call this show kind of like sizing up the bass a little bit. We knew we were playing with not much more than, you know, a pound and a half fish there. But I saw it and I got anxious and wanted to catch it. And I'm, and I'm throwing it. Just throwing a little white grub from Bass Pro Shops. They they have these little uh, these little single tail grubs there, and they're awesome. I like them for the littler bass, and uh, you'd be amazed at how well that little tail gets their juices flowing down there to want to hit that bait. One thing that's very important is of the weight. I don't throw a real light weight when I do this kind of fishing this time of year. I like that bait to get right down there, and I like to get it right on the bed. I want it to be right there because you got to be precise in some areas, so you got to use a heavier weight. I use a bobber stop, okay, and uh, I put a bobber stop underneath my tungsten weight. That way I'm not cutting the line. So that's pretty much the whole, whole enchilada. I'm using a braid line on a spinning outfit here on this particular rig with my Taipan rod. And I'll tell you, <laughs> I'm, throwing, I'm throwing a 12-pound fluorocarbon leader. And the purpose of that is it really this time of year, I don't know if line size is such a big deal for me. I can still seem to find a way to intrigue them to bite and look at the lure more than the line. And uh, it's a whole different process of fishing. Uh, the game changes when they're doing this. They're more hitting out of more territorial deals than they, you know, issues than they are just out there looking at the bait and seeing how natural it really is. Uh, so in doing that, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. The one thing I will say is that you gotta put these fish back so they'll spawn and uh, we have more fish later down the road. This is the one time I always tell even the meat eaters, what we call the meat eaters, the guys that like to take fish home, maybe this ain't the best time of year to do that for bass. You know, if you wait another month, month and a half or so, it'll be great, but uh, you can definitely sure have a lot of fun getting out here doing this kind of fishing. What I meant by sizing up the bass is I've got a bunch of different types of techniques on the deck today, and we're probably gonna run through them all just as if I was in a tournament. If I'm fishing a smaller fish, then I'm gonna throw a smaller bait. You know, your drop shots, your, your, your little tiny grubs. I'll go to something bigger if I'm fishing the bigger fish. You know, we'll go to the big, you know, I'll go to a big magnum tube, you know, or a craw, you know, things like that. And uh, we're gonna show you today how to catch those fish up. And we're gonna have a lot of fun, that's for sure. One thing I do wanna mention, you know, is I've got this new trolling motor, it's the Ultrex, and a lot of people ask me all the time, especially this time of year, why in the world would you need power poles if you got that Ultrex that'll keep you in the same, it's got a, a, a control si system on there called a spot lock. Spot lock is awesome. I wouldn't leave home without this trolling motor, I really wouldn't. But in saying that, there's a time and a place for everything. You have to be quiet, you have to be stealth when you're sitting there and you're working a fish and you got to try to get it to where it's not so spooky of you because you got to realize in this clear water, if you see them, they see you. So it's really important not to do a lot of movement, a lot of hand movements and things like that. Hence the reason why I like a lot of uh, spinning outfits instead of bait casters where I can just kind of flicker it and I don't even have to move my arms a lot of times to, to, to cast out to the fish. But in saying all this, this is the reason why I like my power poles. Power poles are a must for this kind of fishing, I don't care what you're doing. Uh, the Ultrex is nice, it'll keep you in the same spot, but remember, if the propeller's flopping around and, and blowing up the, the water where you're trying to fish, it's not a good thing. So you wanna drop your power poles, of course, and, and get out here and, and uh, be really stealthy to catch these fish. Let's go fishing, see if we can find some bigger fish today. First time I've been on this lake today, first five minutes we catch a little fish, but uh, you know what? Hopefully we find some big fish. Full moon, by the way, so we'll see what we can't do. Oh, man. You know, when I first, we talk about sizing up the fish, I'm throwing a little drop shot here. Arizona Custom Baits, this is a scooter special. 
Reason why I like this worm is it's got a little green in it. When you have a little green in it, it represents more of a bluegill. So, you know, they don't like that in their beds. And when I first pull up to a fish, if I can catch it on a drop shot, you know, if I, if I think I can get it away, even if it's a little bit bigger fish and it's in open water, I'm gonna do that. So I'll throw it out there and uh, see if I can't catch them. I got a fish here that's pretty, pretty aggravated. We just caught that one. And I'm gonna throw this drop shot out on it just to see if it'll hit it. And as long as it stays active with it, it's just, the, the only thing is, is you wanna be able to throw as natural a stuff as you can in there first before you have to really go after them. If this doesn't work, what I'll do is I'll end up going to, a, to my grub for this particular fish. I'm sizing up the fish, he's not that big but he's a lot of fun. It's amazing. I, I, I gotta say, I'm proud of a lot of guys that come to this lake and catch and release because I can tell that these fish have been caught before, you know, and they've put them back and they've gone back there and some of these fish have been caught and they're, they're the ones that are a little bit harder to catch. Now, let me tell you something. I know it's hard to find on a lake like this, but one thing that I would do, if, say I was fishing a tournament, <clears throat> is try to go to areas where I don't think a lot of guys go because fish will spawn wherever their neighborhood is, kind of. They'll figure out a spot there to spawn. And uh, in saying that, I'm gonna go where the fish don't get nearly as pressured. I'll take those secondary spots and hope I find the big ones. It's getting to the point now where there's so many good fishermen out there that know how to do this type of technique that it comes down to just finding the big fish. Can you find them? You know, that's the deal. Whoever finds them usually catches them. Man, I thought this fish was gonna bite on that right away. He didn't want to. Now, I'm gonna pick this up. Got him, we got him. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the old one-two punch there. Sometimes you have to have something that's sitting on the bottom. Even though that drop shot's an awesome tool to catch fish with, sometimes you gotta drag it on the bottom for them to really get excited about it. Let's catch it. Ah. Another little fish, we'll get him back in the water real fast, and we'll move down the bank. That fish was only about 10 feet from the other one we just caught, so hard to resist not catching those fish. Let's move on, see if we can find us maybe something a little bit bigger and see if we can't catch them. Maybe go to the bigger stuff. It's always fun. Anytime my partners always say, uh-oh, gotta grab the big stuff. That's, that's when they know, oh, we found a big one. So we'll go down and we'll try to find the big one. Now, let me tell you something that's really important about going and finding those fish when you're on your trolling motor. It's okay to be shallow. Put yourself in an area where you can, as far down as you can see. First and foremost, an awesome pair of polarized sunglasses is a must when you're doing this kind of fishing. I like the amber, copper amber lenses. Uh, to me, they're the best. So I'm gonna use those. They're making some new ones now, some that got some, that has green tint to them that might be pretty good, but I like what I've been using. I've been using them for years. I see well with it. But the first and foremost thing that you need to do is when you're going down the bank, when you do see a fish, Go by the fish, don't stop your trolling motor in your boat right on him right away. Go by the fish, make the loop around, take your time, set yourself up to catch these fish. Because if you go to stop, the fish will get spooky, be harder to catch. Come on. Oh, I had him. Dang, come and he went up and just whacked that thing. <laughs> He's back up there. He's like, yeah, stay out of my territory. That's when he. <laughs> It cracks me up the personality of these fish, man. <laughs> it really is funny <laughs> to watch him. He really thinks he's something else, man. He's a tough guy. All right, we're fixing to see how tough this fish is. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now what are you gonna do? Now what are you gonna do? Oh, oh. <laughs> that is so much fun. Oh my god. Oh. That's just an easy form of catch and release, folks.
Got it. Got it. <laughs> A little bit better fish there, folks. <laughs> we had to camouflage ourselves behind the tree. Come on. <laughs> ah, got him. <laughs> A little bit bigger fish. Oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe this. You gotta see this, you gotta see this. I don't know if you can get a close up of this. He's got a gizzard shad or something in his throat. Look at that, in the sun. Try to hold it in the sun. If you can see all the way down there, look at the fin. He's got a gizzard shad or something down there. See that? Look at that. <laughs> we'll let him go. They don't like them around their territory either, and they'll eat them, let me tell you. That's hence the reason I really like to use something that's got a little, if I use a crawdad, something that's got a little flap to it, or if I use a grub, something with a little tail to it, makes a big difference because, boy, they go after it. They think it's a fin, and uh, yeah, he tore that one up. But that's what they'll do. He had a full-size fish in his mouth, let me tell you. <laughs> this fish is caught, he just don't know it yet. Got him. <laughs> I knew I'd get you that time, you turkey. <laughs> Woo -hoo. He fights like he's got some shoulders, but he ain't that big, come on, baby. <laughs> Look how beautiful that fish is, though. All right, bud. Ooh, I got him hooked in the bottom of the lip. Look at that. Right in the bottom of the jaw. There we go. All right, look at that. <laughs> that fish, you know, a lot of them will look at your bait. And a lot of folks throw their bait inside, inside the bed or inside the area where the fish doesn't like it. And they'll twitch it a few times and then they'll reel it out and throw it back out there. But the cat and mouse game with the fish is to let him think that he's the bully. And you kind of ease it out of the bed and kind of keep easing it out of there and they chase it out and they go back up. And the more they chase it out, the braver they get and eventually, boink, they get it. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> So far today's been the grub. The little bit of breeze that we have on the water today makes it really tough to, to see very deep. So you're having to find the ones that you can kind of see move around. What I do when I get up shallow and I see something move, and there's a lot of carp. You make mistakes thinking that you're seeing bass and they're carp. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important, no matter what time of year it is, Always remember that if you pull up on some fish in a bush that you see, or even if you see them on a bed, and you're not able to catch them, periodically throughout the day, go back and check them, because you never know. It's all about timing in this game, and sometimes those fish will turn on, and they'll want to eat. So uh, just remember that if you see fish, a lot of times, especially in bushes, because we're seeing a lot today, we've seen a few in the brush piles and things like that, Sometimes they want to bite, sometimes they don't, but if you go back and peri uh, periodically check it, you're gonna find a time that they're willing to bite and you might catch that big fish that you decided to give up on and figure out he's not gonna bite and never go back to him. So always remember to do that. You'll probably end up doing a lot better. Got him that time. He went and got that. <laughs> oh, look at that fish. <laughs> uh, uh, up in the humbug. Come on, in that dirty water. <laughs> oh, come on, a little bit bigger fish. They're harder to find today with that 10 mile an hour wind, but you find a few little glassy areas, you might be able to get in here and get a few like this. Come on, don't you dare come off there. Oh no, come on, come on. Yeah. 
<laughs> Oop. There's a beautiful fish right there, folks. <laughs> Little Lake Pleasant bass right there. A little harder to see in this dirty water. We came up in the humbug. See you, buddy. We came up in the humbug thinking, oh man, it might be nice in there. You know, maybe we can break the wind a little bit somewhere. This is about the only place I can find a slick. And you know, you take what the lake will give you. You know, I'll tell you what, it's not easy. We missed it by about a week, I think, but they're still there. You know, there's there's a lot of fish. I'm sure there's a lot of fish to be had. It, the, the, the deal is, is when that wind gets to kicking, and it's kicking probably, I want to say around 10 or so. That You know, it only takes a good little ripple like what you see across the lake over there to make it really tough unless the water's absolutely gin clear. And even when it's gin clear, it's hard, really hard to see them, you know. So you throw around a sinko a little bit or do something like that. Or if the wind gets to kicking too bad, you pick up a crankbait or a spinnerbait, like I say, and go down the bank a little bit. But I'm stubborn. I like to go see if I can still find some fish. So. We went across him and I happened to see him move and we turned around and caught that fish. But, you know, there again, I have to say with the wind blowing the way it is, got to thank the power poles on that one, I'll tell you, because I don't think we would have caught that fish. It took a little bit of working, but we got him. We had to figure out exactly what he wanted and where it was. Well, folks, what a day. The wind decided not to let up. It just kept coming and kept coming. We knew we had a small window to go out and catch some of these, these sight fish and have some fun with them. But uh, I'll tell you, we found some areas that uh, held a few fish. Couldn't find that big one we were looking for. He kind of eluded us today. And I got a feeling we were probably uh, just a wee bit late on getting on these bigger fish that we could see. but. You know, I'm sure there's still a lot out here on, on the beds and uh, you can come out here and catch them. It just wasn't a very good day for us at all with the wind sweeping around and over 10 mile an hour winds. It gets a little tough at that point, but we still had a lot of fun. Get out here to Lake Pleasant, you'll have a lot of fun. The main lake is, is beautiful right now and uh, really clear. And, and that's what I love to fish is that really clear water. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, pick up some Senkos, pick up some of those baits that I was telling you about, the, the little uh, Bass Pro Grubs. It's a five inch grub and it, it'll really work for you good. And uh, of course, if you're drop shotting, don't forget your Arizona Custom Baits. That Scooter Special is an awesome bait this time of year when they don't like those bluegill around. So definitely check those out as well. Thanks for joining us on the show. Hey, we'll catch you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>